about the mystical side of the spider mythos and spider totems. I'm going to start this all the way back at the beginning, where the idea of spider totems first gets introduced to Peter Parker. Now, he's out looking for crime to fight one night when this old man is sitting on the side of the building and addresses Pete by his real name, not as Spider-Man. Now, obviously, there's red flags everywhere, but Pete takes a minute to sit down and talk to Ezekiel Sims and hear him out on what he has to say. He explains to Pete that, like, him becoming a Spider-Man wasn't just by chance, that there's a supernatural element to it. While sure he was bit by a radioactive spider, there's like a godlike deity that basically wanted that to happen. They choose their avatars, like Peter, to act out their wishes in the real world. He goes on to say that's basically why Pete fights so many animal-themed villains, because whether they know it or not, they're kind of representing these other deities. Zeke was trying to warn Peter about Morlin the Inheritor, and he goes on to have his first run-in with him. If you don't know, Inheritors are this rare species that basically their whole deal is they eat the life force of spider totems. Now, these things are ridiculous. Pete says that Morlin hits harder than the Hulk, and it takes days of fighting before Pete's able to figure out a way to beat him. We later learn that Ezekiel's intentions with Peter weren't exactly altruistic, as it turns out that Zeke had performed a ritual years and years ago to basically steal the power from the totems, and they're coming to collect now. His plan for survival is to mix his and Peter's blood and make the deity known as the Gatekeeper believe that Peter Parker's the imposter, not Zeke. But when the Gatekeeper comes to collect, Ezekiel has a change of heart when he realizes all the good Peter's done in his life, and he sacrifices himself so that Peter would live. But this is the first time we see a spider totem. Pete doesn't really believe in his connection to the spider deities until his next run-in with Morlin where he gets beat to death. A crowd was forming and tons of police were arriving and Morlin wanted to enjoy his meal when he ate Peter because this was the only spider totem that ever avoided him. So he decides to wait and just enjoy his meal in the hospital where Pete's on his deathbed. Now when he arrives and like threatens Mary Jane, the man inside Peter at this point is pretty much gone. He's dead. But the spider part of him, his essence, still lived. And the totem that's connected to Peter Parker starts to use him as his avatar. He manifests in the real world and changes Peter. He grows this giant spike and he's able to kill Morlin and even consume his life energy. But all that proved to be too much for Peter's body as he dies and the Avengers come to collect him and take his body back to the tower. But while his body's there, they get an intruder alert and rush to the lab he was being kept in where they find that it has been cracked open, that his insides are gone and basically he's laying there like an empty husk. Meanwhile, Peter Parker had basically been reborn and he was healing in this web sack under a bridge. And while he's in there, he's finally communicating with the spider totem that's given him these powers all these years, known as the Other. He explains to Pete that much like spiders will once in their life molt their skin, that this is basically his second chance. He goes on to tell him he has to do it right this time. He can't keep denying the spider like he has been before. He was trying to hide behind the mask and the web shooters and trying to tell himself he wasn't a spider inside. But if he is to live now, he has to embrace his spider. He has to embrace the Other. Obviously wanting to live, Peter accepts, he busts out of his web sack, and has newfound powers where he's embraced the spider. He has organic webbing now, he has night vision, he's more spider-like in nature when he fights. He does things more instinctually, like creating this web to feel the vibrations of a girl who's trapped under a collapsed building. But for whatever reason, all of these spider upgrades kind of get taken away when one more day happens, his deal with Mephisto resets everything, and he's back to using web shooters. Now I told you all this because it's really important when it comes to the Spider-Verse, see, because Morlin wasn't the only inheritor. No, there's a whole family of these bastards whose whole thing is feeding on spider totems. Now with all of these multiversal spider people in danger, this is where they start teaming up and communicating with each other from universe to universe. This is where we also learn the importance of the spiders and their connection to the multiverse. See, there's this deity known as the Great Weaver who exists on Earth-001, the origin point of the entire multiverse. It is here that the web of life and destiny is weaved and created. Every single thread is a different universe, and the spider totems on each universe are kind of in charge of protecting it. Basically, the spider people are the most important things to the multiversal reality of Marvel. Now, every single spider person isn't exactly assigned to one specific totem. Like, we've seen both Peter Parker and Kane Parker be the receptacle for the other. He can move through both of them. But in certain scenarios, there is like a one-to-one -one connection where Cindy Moon is the avatar of the bride. It's for that very reason that she was the avatar of the bride and he was the avatar of the other, that they couldn't be around each other without, you know, trying to mate, basically. Don't worry, that that's all gone now. Basically, no matter what happened and however a spider person got their powers, there is a higher power to it. There's a higher power like pulling the strings behind it. Whether it was a radioactive spider bite or like genetic splicing or however, or if you're a clone, regardless, the spider totems are the reason that all of these spider people even exist. I tried to make this extremely simple and not confusing, and I know that's almost an impossible task, but hopefully it worked.